Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about motion of a falling body. Just a brief introduction to this idea and um, how it relates to our differential equations. So specifically we're going to be looking at first order differential equations now and over the next couple of videos. And so let's start with this idea of a falling object. So an object falls through the air towards Earth, assuming that the only forces acting on the object are gravity and air resistance, determine the velocity of the object as a function of time. And so in order to work with this idea, we actually end up using a first order differential equation. So remember, differential equation just is an equation involving derivatives. First order means that the biggest derivative you see is a first derivative. And so let's break down the components of this equation. M represents mass of the object. dv dt, the derivative of velocity with respect to time, is acceleration. mg is the force due to gravity or weight. And then g is our acceleration due to gravity. And then negative bv is our air resistance. And b is a positive constant that depends on the density of the air and the shape of the object. And so just a um, sketch for you for seeing what's going on. M is your mass. It's falling toward Earth. And so um, V would be positive in the downward direction. Now to solve this type of equation, we're going to use a technique called separation of variables. So we'll get into this in um, good detail in the next video, but we're going to go ahead and work through this example uh, for this first one. So what we do is we treat dV and dt from our derivative here in our equation as differentials and we isolate them or we isolate v excuse me and t on opposite sides of the equal sign so let's try that out so here's our equation and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just um, multiply both sides of the equal sign by dt okay so that's why it moved over here and it's gone on the left then if i want dv and dt or my variables eventually v and t to be on opposite sides of the equal sign I'm going to go ahead and just leave dt on the right side and divide out this factor mg minus bv okay and let's go ahead and take this m and just divide it over as well it's going to be on the right side now so now we have dv on the left side dt on the right side and what we can do after this once we've done the moving around rearranging is we can start integrating so we're working with a first order differential equation so we should only have to integrate once because remember what we're, you're trying to solve for is the unknown original function we have an equation involving the derivative of that function so we want to know what was the original function so that's why we're going to integrate so just a little bit of rearranging I move the dv to the back here dt to the back and then we use our integration techniques that we've learned from the past so on the left side, we actually need to use u substitution. So if we let the denominator equal u, and then if we differentiate it with respect to v, then mg is a constant, so the derivative would be 0. The derivative with respect to v here of negative b times v would just be negative b times 1. So that's why we have du equals negative b dv. Okay? So have that here we're going to go ahead and do that substitution so this becomes 1 over u and then when you um, isolate dv right here just divide the negative b and that's where the du over negative b came from it's replacing the dv and then the 1 over m is still there I'm going to go ahead and factor out anything that's a constant so the 1 over m on the right side is just going to go out front the negative 1 over b is going to go out front here and then we integrate this is just 1 over u, so integrate that, we get ln and then um, of u. And then on the right side, this is integral of 1, which is just t, our variable. We still have our constants in the front, so we put them there. And then there's no limits of integration, so don't forget your constant here, plus c. All right, so we did our integration. And now I'm just going to replace what u equaled when we had done our u substitution. So mg minus bv. And then let's go ahead and just move this negative b on, from this denominator. So multiply both sides of this equation by negative b. And that's why we end up with negative b over m times t, and then negative bc. And so now, remember what we're looking for. We had a differential equation involving a first order derivative. 
and we're trying to get to the original function. So we want to, we integrated, and now we just need to solve for that original function. We need to solve this equation for v. Okay, so here's our equation, solving for v. Notice where it's at. It's in the argument of our natural log function. So the only way to get it out here is to introduce e. So we say e to the left side of the equal sign as the power equals e to the right side of the equal sign as the power. And then let's do a little bit of rearranging here. Using our rules of exponents, on the right side, we can say that e to a power, a product, or sorry, a sum here, technically a difference, but if you add exponents or subtract right here, you can separate them. So this is one of your exponent rules. Um, so if you want to put it back together, e to the first power plus the second power is how you would put them back together, what you have right here. Okay, and now notice what we have. A couple of things happen here. E raised to the ln of something. The whole reason why we did that is because the E and the ln, they undo each other. They have the same base from your rules of logarithms. We learned about that. And so that's why once you do this, you just are left with the argument mg minus bv. That's why we introduced E in the first place. On the right side, this E to the negative bc that I separated, all of this is a constant. Remember, E is a number, about 2.71. Negative b is a number, and our constant c is a number, so just call this another constant. So I'm going to group all that together and just call it a. Okay, a couple of steps remaining. We're, remember, we're trying to find v. So let's move over the mg by subtracting. And last step, we're going to divide out the negative b. Okay, and so our general solution, just I just moved the terms over, is v equals, so our unknown function v for velocity, is mg over b minus a over b e to the negative bt over m. Okay, so just the last things to mention here. For um, specific cases, you would probably know what m is, g is, and then b. In this, time, this example, I just left everything as variables, but in a lot of the problems you work on, you'll know the actual numbers to plug in. v sub 0, or v naught, is the initial velocity. It's what you get at time 0. And if you know that value, if it's given, you can actually use that to find a. And then last thing to mention, as t approaches infinity, then the velocity of t, v of t, actually approaches mg over b, regardless of the initial velocity. And so that's why this term, mg over b, is referred to as the limiting velocity, or also called terminal velocity. Okay, so that's it for this one, just a brief introduction to this idea.